Can you think of a chess move that can help you unleash an incredible attack or help you defend a difficult position just as easily? The exchange sacrifice can do exactly these things, making it an excellent weapon for attack and defense. An exchange sacrifice is when you sacrifice a rook for a minor piece. In this position, white has just played g4. Assuming that the knight must move back to f6, it's only safe square. Notice that black has the two bishops, the rook on c4, and the queen on a5, all putting pressure on white's castled king. White's knight on c3 is keeping the position together. So one thing to consider is an exchange sacrifice. If black sacrifices the exchange immediately with rook takes c3, removing the guard and threatening queen a2 check, white can simply play knight takes c3. And after bishop takes c3, queen takes c3, white captures with the queen, allowing the king an important escape square on d2. After queen takes a2 check, king c1, Black's exchange sacrifice was not successful as white is able to escape the attack. In the game, black played the powerful move knight g3, attacking both the knight on e2 and rook on h1. If white moves the rook, black will simply capture the knight on e2 when white's knight on c3 loses its key protection. Black's two bishops, rook and queen, will overwhelm white's defenses. In the game, white played knight takes g3. White's knight on c3 has lost its key defender, the other knight, so black destroys white's defenses with the exchange sacrifice, rook takes c3. This is the easiest type of exchange sacrifice to play. White cannot accept the sacrifice because after b takes c3, black will deliver checkmate after queen takes a2 check, followed by queen a1, checkmate. Black has already regained the sacrifice material and has an overwhelming attack. Black won the game quickly. Let's take a look at another example of the exchange sacrifice. In this position, Grandmaster Jan Timon just played f6, attacking white's knight. Grandmaster Ulf Anderson, playing the white pieces, ignores this threat and unleashes a powerful positional exchange sacrifice with rook takes b5. After the captures bishop takes b5, rook takes b5, f takes e5, and rook takes a5, let's take a look at this position. White sacrificed a rook for a knight and a pawn. Why would white do this? White does not have a clear attack against the king, so we call this sacrifice a positional exchange sacrifice. Notice that white has a pass pawn on c5, two powerful bishops pointing toward the queen side, and white is already threatening to take another pawn with rook takes a7. Black, on the other hand, has all of his pieces on the back rank and is very passive. White has an overwhelming positional advantage. After rook c7, guarding the weak a7 pawn, Anderson played c6, grabbing more space and preparing to play bishop takes a7 on the next move creating another pass pawn on the A-file. White's pieces are working very well together, and Black's rooks will remain passive. White's positional advantage led to victory in the endgame. Let's take a look at one more example together. Exchange sacrifices are not always played to attack your opponent. Grandmaster and future world champion McCall Botvinnik has found himself in trouble with the Black pieces. Black has a weak pawn structure, and white has a simple plan of winning the c5 pawn with moves like queen f2 and knight a4. After losing that pawn, black would be down material and also would not have any active play. Botvinnik used the exchange sacrifice to try and hold his position together by playing the surprising rook d4. Black offers an exchange sacrifice to fix his doubled pawns on the c-file and keep the position closed. If white accepts the exchange sacrifice right away with bishop takes d4, c takes d4, after knight a4, black would use the same plan as in the game with c5. 
let's see what happened in the game to understand why this exchange sacrifice was black's best chance. In the game, white played knight e2. Since black's bishop on a6 is poorly placed, Botvinnik places the bishop on a better diagonal with bishop c8. After knight takes d4, c takes d4, black has sacrificed the rook for a knight, but has undoubled his pawns, and black's newly created pass pawn on d4 blocks the only file that was open, the d file. This will make it difficult for white to find open lines to make the most out of the two rooks. In this position, white should have kept the advantage by playing bishop d2, so white could later plan to open up the queen side for the rooks by playing a3 and b4. White played bishop f2, and after c5, Botvinnik has a very strong pawn center and makes it very difficult for white to open up lines on the queen side for his rooks. If white can't activate the rooks, then white's small material advantage isn't that important. Black's defensive exchange sacrifice kept the position closed and forced white to make difficult decisions. Not only did Botvinnik defend this position, he later attacked on the king side and was able to win the game. Are you ready to unleash the powerful exchange sacrifice? Let's see.